I just have a quick question. Um, in the course, I think it's fairly early in the course, it says that if one of us gets it, that the whole illusion will end and we'll all be back one with, with everything. And so I'm wondering, and I've always kind of wondered this, I've been studying the course about 10 years, and uh, it seems to me that um, Jesua or Jesus or whatever name you want to give him uh, got it, and other people, possibly, you know, Gandhi might have gotten it, and Mohammed, and um, the other avatars that have shown up on the planet Buddha. So why are, why are we still here? <laughs> okay, let's go with that one. That's a good one. Uh, well, people never get it uh, because people are the mask. So. Um, Jesus does have a line in the Course where he says, when I awoke, you were with me. But it's not like Jesus the man, as if there was a man who had an enlightened mind, or a person who had an enlightened mind. That enlightenment is a state of being. And a lot of us can relate to that. Except that to the ego, it associates a person with the state. So we say, Jesus Christ. You know, or Jesus the Christ, or we talk about Siddhartha, Siddhartha, okay, temptations, trials, ah, Buddha, Buddha nature, Buddha nature, or, you know, Krishna, uh, you know, there's the, the person, the personality, Mary Baker Eddy, or um, Amma, or all the different saints and mystics get associated with the mystical state, but the mystical state really far transcends the mask and what seemed to be the personality self. So, you could say that, like I've said many times over many years, that, that people don't become enlightened. That that's just a, a phraseology or terminology that's used. But, but the idea that there are parts, and one by one the parts are waking up, is still a metaphor that that includes the fragmentation and the parts, and the actual state is totally transcendent of the parts. It's more than, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, but the, the whole is real and the parts are not. And so, that's what the realization, the recognition of enlightenment is about. Another way to say it is that fragmented perception becomes whole, or unified. And so you see the big picture, that's literally beyond the parts. You, the cracked mirror suddenly is not cracked anymore. It's, it's unified, it's smooth, it's clear, it's whole. And quantum physics is, is really good. The more people open up and start studying quantum physics, they go, whoa, this is radical. It's just as radical as the teachings in the Course. Because in quantum physics, the teaching is that there is, there is no world apart from consciousness, or there is no world apart from what you think. Jesus says the same thing in, in Lesson 132, there is no world apart from what you think. There is no world, he even puts in there with an exclamation right. point. But he's, it's all <coughs> training the mind to see everything in a unified way. Uh, in quantum physics, they have a principle called entanglement. And that's the cute way that the scientists are describing connectivity. The, what they call entanglement, which doesn't sound good from a, like a relationship standpoint, <laughs> it's kind of codependent and everything, but no, the scientists use entanglement to say that everything is absolutely connected. That everything in all of the cosmos and all of time and space is yeah. absolutely connected. And there is no s space or distance between everything. It's all absolutely connected. That's describing, again, that state where when one awakes, everything awakes, because becoming aware of that connectivity is what the enlightenment's about. So, only from a time perspective of thinking that there's certain ones that woke up and then another one woke up, it seems like it's going at a snail's pace <laughs> over these last 2,000 years. It's like, okay, how many enlightened beings have we got? You know, it's, how many billions do we have? 
<laughs> you know, it seems like it's going to take millions and millions of years before there's not one separate one walking alone. But actually the good news is it's, it's just one tweak of mind, one atonement shift of mind that, that brings the mind into the awareness of the complete oneness and connectivity of everything in perception. And then the experience of that, it's like whatever you had an amnesia of, like of spirit, you start to have an awareness of that and an amnesia of the fragmentation. So some of you heard our speaker talk, there is no Armel, <laughs> which, which really starts to become an expansive experience, which is so vast and so still that, that you start to really not relate to anything else. You, you just kind of get in the tractor beam of this new unified experience and you yield into it and you give way to it and it becomes your consistent experience. And from this consistent experience, we'll say the Holy Spirit can still use words from this still, quiet, peaceful experience. Words can still be used. Sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. You know, it's involuntary. It's, it's really up to the Spirit. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. It's actually a funny thing. I just had the thought that it's funny every time I come down here, poof, <laughs> I'm silent. <laughs> no words are coming. <laughs> and when I'm up here, from time to time, there are words coming. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Instead of stage fright, she's having stage peace. <laughs> <laughs>